Good morning. It is another day that I can get into the Word of God and hope that you would join me as I get into Joshua chapter 8. Father, we thank you for your Word. It is so good. Thank you for allowing me to see what has been written that I've never seen before. And thank you that I will have a clear understanding and deliver it the way that you will have come through me. Uh, let me see what you wrote and share with others. And if I make a mistake, thank you for bringing correction to it. And uh, thank you for being the father that we can come to that is almighty. And that you have a will in heaven that you want done on earth and use me as a vessel to do my part. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your understanding, your teaching, your guidance. And thank you for helping me to execute your word just by allowing this vitamin of your word to get inside of me to do the work that you always have designed for me to have. Forgive me of the things that I've done wrong, Lord, and help me forgive those people who have done me wrong. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is the authorization by Jesus that we have a right to come before him and ask for forgiveness. All right. I'm getting ready to get into Joshua 8 chapter. This is one of the, this chapter right here had me last night and this morning. My desire is always to come early, but sometimes I just have to take my time to make sure that what I do, because I don't want to confuse anybody and I want to make sure that I know what I'm talking about because I'm eating this myself. And what I eat, I want to share with other people. So, Joshua chapter 8. My God, this thing is so good. I don't, you know, I, I pray that people that have the influence over people, and I pray that the audience that God has given me, that it increases to the point that people get an education so they can know exactly what they have a right to expect when, they, when it comes down to saying what God said. Because God is very, very, very intelligent. Very intelligent. And um, with that being said, Chapter 8 is God's, God continues. What happened in chapter 7 is they went to war and they were defeated by a very small group of people that made them so afraid because they was like, how do we miss it? This is Joshua being a man of wisdom, knowing how to lead an army, and then he got defeated. It's almost like I, my football team always... Um, scores and all of a sudden we beat by a team that never scored somebody that has never won a game came against somebody who has won most of the games big time well-known renowned and you're defeated by somebody who just got started and um it's almost like a clown is leading them but they beat you down and that's confusing somebody that don't know god never read the word and here it is, you, you, you walking with God and God has been doing good things in your life. And all of a sudden you're being beat down by somebody who's blind. That'll make you go and get on your knees like Joshua did. Say, what happened, Lord? I mean, I've been doing all I know to do. I treat my wife right, right? And I've been paying my bills on time. And I make sure my neighbor's ox is put up when he doesn't see it. I do all the things that you said don't do. I'm not looking at pornographic movies. And all of a sudden I'm losing. I know you. So what's going on with me losing against somebody? This, these folk are blind. This is a blind group of people. And they hear that, here it is, we are representing you and we're losing. This don't sound right. That's the time to go to God. That's not the time to walk away from God and say, well, I don't get it, I'm done. That's the time to go to God and say, something is wrong here. I'm used to winning. Why did my class fail? Why did all the kids in my class fail this year? And that's not normal for me. My math scores are normally, they, they look like I've done my job. But when I get back something that is not right, it's confusing. Especially to somebody who depends on God. And God said, check the camp. Go back and check and see something in the house that I don't, I don't drag along. You got, a, you, you, you got people that understand that I said you can forgive if they do wrong. You got people that I put in position to talk to when you, you know, need uh, uh, counseling. So I don't, I'm just, I'm not tight. I'm not, I'm not ignorant that you are human, but you got a problem in the camp. Somebody put their hand on something that I definitely clearly said don't do. And when they investigated, 
called a court session, got the whole group together, and then you're talking about thousands. Thousands of ten thousands. And they found out who had the thing that told God, I ain't going nowhere with that. And Achan was the man that God had to destroy. He said, get rid of him, burn him, mama, daddy, sister, dog, cat, everything that belonged. I don't want to see nothing that looked like Achan. And the people of God had the faith of God and they got rid of Achan. And we've been a moving to chapter 8 to see what is God doing right now. And then you might ask a question. Suppose I wrote the question down. What, why is God, what, what, why does God allow wars? What, what causes God to, when he said, I want to save, but at the same time, I got to deal with somebody that's got to die. And fair question if you got that. I mean, it's all right because God has no problem with responding to human ants, human uh, in, in inquisitions, human uh, in, in inquiry. He said, you want to know? I don't have a problem with telling you. He said, let me tell you something what I do. He said, go back. I always remember who I am when I introduce myself to the world. I start out with, with uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve did wrong. He said, I could have destroyed Adam and Eve that day. I could have destroyed them, so I ain't even fit to deal with this. I, you know, I don't make mistakes, but I ain't even deal with this. But what he did was his mercy started right there. He saw Adam and Eve, who had sinned, and then once he saw that they had done wrong, because all he clearly said is, you got 99 trees in here, don't eat off this one. And the one that he said, somebody got in the ear, and they were deceived, and they ate of that tree, and God said, hey, put you out. First, first expression, and, and we see God mercy. And not only did he say that, he said, y'all trying to cover yourself with leaves. And he said, let me make you a coat. Let me put you on something that'll keep you warm. But you got to leave here. Because if not, the state that you're in, you would fool around and eat off that tree of life, and you're going to stay in that state forever, and I won't be able to bring my plan to pass. So... You got to get you out. Come on, Adam. Come on, Eve. Come on, baby. All right, y'all, come on out of here. So he brought them out of Adam and Eve, and then they had two sons, Cain and Abel. So God is still continuing with man. So he told Cain and Abel, said, get up every morning and meet me out in the field about 4 o'clock in the morning. We're going to work to sun down. Come on out here. I'm going to show you how to execute what I want you to do in this earth. So the two guys got up every morning to follow God's instruction. Cain and Abel understand what they did wrong. But God said, let me have these boys. I understand y'all. Y'all deal with, do what y'all can do. But let me try to train your children. So the word says, and the Lord taught them. And over the process of time, in the fourth chapter of Genesis, they brought forth an offering. They brought their offerings. Understanding God had trained them all the way up to this point. Now it's time to show God that you understood his class and what you learned, his training. So I got to bring some fruit. Abel got up. And the word says, and he brought the firstling. God said, I have trained you. Always give me something first. God didn't just start saying that when we call it tithe. He said that in the garden. Give me the first fruit. I'm not, to be, be honest with you, God is not saying bring it to me so I can eat it. I just want to make sure that what you're eating is good for you. Because when you give me the first fruit, I'm not going to ever bring it up to heaven and come through the atmosphere and the stratosphere and go through the, you know, the layers of the earth and get all, I mean, the layers of the, the heavens to get what you're bringing me. I just want to see what you're bringing. So when you look at it, you understand the quality of what I want you to always do. What I want you to do is always give first class quality to everybody. So I figured if you give me the first, then the rest of it is, is, is blessed. The rest of it that you're going to have... It's going to be honored because it's going to, I, 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 this past inspection, I, I let it go. So Abel did what was right. Cain did this. And we argue over what Cain, this is all Cain did. If you understand the language of English, the word says, now understand firstling is an adjective which describes what type of fruit that he brought. He brought the first. Cain did like we do 2020, don't matter what God wants, just give an offering. Anything to do in the order don't matter. You just give it to him. It wasn't because it was this or that. We argue. So well, he gave him a meat of another one. Said, no, he gave a grain. So we argue with the foolishness. And God said, no, everybody not going to bring me the same thing. I told Cain when, when he was getting up at four o'clock in the morning, always remember, you got to give me the best. You got to give me the first now. Whatever comes up first. 
whatever produces first, you got to let me have it. Give it to me that you remember me. Let me inspect what you bring and then I'll see that the rest of what you got is good. Because if, if you bring me something that's not good, I'm going to tell you the rest of it ain't no good. So Cain was like, oh God, attitude. I, I mean, here, this, I mean, this will do it. it you want a fan, this will keep you warm. I mean, I mean, cool. God said, no, nah, Cain, I ain't taking it like that, baby. I taught you better than that. You represent me, I'm God. So now go back and do it over and I'll accept it. Cain go like, you no, know, you too strict. You want everything right. I ain't even God, let me tell you. And then Cain started thinking, you know what? I'm sick of Abel. I'm sick of him trying to follow instruction. I ain't got time for that. Next thing I know, Cain was out in the field. And next thing I know, Cain came out by himself. And the ground started sending God a text message. Lord, somebody, Cain done killed his brother. And then God walked up to Cain and said, where your brother at? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Now you get smart with God. Now you know, you know God could have wiped Cain out. Cain out. But God allowed Cain. So, okay, Cain, now y'all know what the problem is. Sin lies at the door now. It's lying ready there, couching, ready, ready to pounce on you. You got to go do it over because if not, you're going to drag life all the way through with a half-done job. And you will never be amount to anything that I had planned for man. Cain said, well, I am good. Lord said, all right, let me put a mark on you because I'm going to tell you right now, everybody see you going to kill you. Because every, every product that you bring and produce, people going to find something wrong with it to bring it back to you. And you're just going to be always continuing in a spiral of doing it over and half doing it. And people going to get mad at you because they're going to get sick of you. Cain said, that's all right, I, I do it. And then the word said, and Cain walked away from God and went to the land of sleep. Nah. You know, D, I just say sleep. And he said, I'll be in my own city. And then Cain started raising his children, naming his children like the names of, like the same names that Adam and Eve gonna have later. So something about these names. And the next thing you know, Cain has produced a child that killed another man. And God said, next, Adam and Eve, get busy. Give me another baby. I'm done with that. Because if the only thing that you're gonna produce and give people something that you wouldn't take if they were giving it to you, he said, I ain't going to put my name on you. I, you you're not going to be blessed. That's how simple the word is. You're not going to be blessed because you got a product of people buying it. You know you didn't, you didn't have a watch it. You, you, know, you know you didn't have to do what the word said. Do, let me tell you something what I do. I crochet earring. When I first started making these things, God was watching how I was doing it. And I was doing it like Cain. He said, you, he said what are you giving that to? Who, who, who going to wear that? I understand that you make mistakes, but don't make mistakes knowing you make mistakes and then and then trying to sell it when you could have done it over. Now, if you make a mistake and you don't know you did, that's a whole different ball game. And then honor the thing that they bring it back and find out that you did that you didn't know. Then, okay, remake it. But don't sell people something you know it ain't no good from the get-go. Then I know I ain't gonna, I'm not going to sanction what you're doing. You're just making stuff in ways and time. And when I get back, I say, Brent, what you do? He said, did nobody buy it? He's because I ain't sent nobody your way to get it. Why? Because you didn't put your best foot forward. That's how simple the word is. So what God is saying here, I don't have a problem with getting rid of people that don't do what I say do. And he said, I don't look back after I do it. I don't say, ooh, I pity my. If I got a company and I know that I put everything that I know in this company, every dime, every thought, every mind, I'm God. I am thinking about the distance from the sun to earth and how much heat that's going to keep you warm and rotate you so you won't burn up. I thought about that. I know how many stars I want in the sky. I know how many trees need to be. I know how many bridges need to be built so that you can transport what you need. I know all of that. I thought about that. And when I do what I do, I make it good because I want my name on what I do. I want people to, to see how good. I ain't just good because I'm, I'm good because I'm good. But I'm good because I want you to know I'm good and I want you to be just like me. So that's why I don't have a problem with getting rid of people that don't care nothing about how they do things. Because I got your back when people do you like that. I have to have their back when you do them like that. Simple as that. It's business. I'm a business God. That's why when I call a session, I don't want you coming in and in, in, going into my house telling people, oh, you're going to be blessed. You're going to heaven. Oh, my God, you're going to do this. And God going to bless you all the way. Oh, God. I, I, and then you ain't got to worry about nothing. With, oh, you go, all you got to do is just open up your mouth and tell me to come into your life. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make all everything. I'm going to be good. Oh, want to do it? 
God said, I don't run that. That's not, that's not how I run my business. He said, that's not how you run yours. What do you do when you got a business that you know you invested in? You call the people in. You said, these are the things that you can have. And then on the other side, these are the things that you can't have. This is a customer service place. Chick-fil-A can't come in there talking about if you come to work and you and all you got to do is come to work and sell the sell chicken and, and, and tell the people, say, my pleasure, and just going about your business. And that, they said, no, that's what they do. But the instruction that Chick-fil-A had is we got a meeting at 5 o'clock in the morning. We need everybody here. What you think they're getting ready to do? They finna lay down some of these rules, laws, regulations. So we got some complaint against the customer saying that you had an attitude that we don't, we don't represent like that. Now, if you want this job, I want you to keep it. But if not, we got to let you know, balance this thing. We got all your benefits, your vision, your, your teeth, your health insurance, and we're paying you, and we let you put, put some money in an investment. Oh, we got all of that. But on the other side of this mountain, if you ever talk to one of our customers and put anything in this food that we didn't ordain, we're going to cut you. That's all God is saying. He said, but what, I, what, you, what you told people at church is that if you go meet me in the beginning, you ain't going to like me. So don't, just don't come to my office to learn what I really said because that's not what you're going to get. And then when they go out of line with the word of God, then they start getting my wrath. Then they look at me like, I thought you, how I get this? Because they didn't tell you the whole counsel. God had to stop the earth. And said, be still, get out of them churches, get out of them classrooms, and go home for yourself and read and see if I match what they're saying. Because you got syphilis, you got STDs, you got divorces, you got all of these things. You're stealing, you're lying, your community is a mirror of the church. The black community is a mirror of what the black churches have been talking and, and, you know, I don't say nothing about the other church because I already know that's correction over there. But God sends certain people to certain people because he said, you talk to them. You go talk to the folk that look like you because you know what's going on. Now you know. You can get on the witness and say, I don't know nothing about why Mr. So-and-so do it like that. But I can tell you with the four or five, six or seven, eight, nine places I've been, Lord, they ain't been serving your word. What I'm getting ready to read today is the first time I've read it in my life. Well, then you should have been reading for now, nah, baby. You should have said that when you were taking all the money that I had. And I'm being so ignorant. I had ignorant parents and I love my parents. But when it comes down to the word, it is what it is. I'll pay more attention to what you had on. You, 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 you put that thing in front of my face and you, and you, and you bewitched me. You witchcraft me. And you told me, sir, if they got this on, they, 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 they ain't saved. That's all I knew. Now that all of this wine that's been sitting on the shelf this long, God is still good. He said, I saved it just so you can sip on it, girl. There's some good wine. There's some good wine up in chapter 8. And I'm going to take my time and read it. Because in chapter 7, the children of Israel failed to follow instructions. And God said, stop it right here. Clean it up. And I'm going to tell you one thing about God. I had to write this down. He said, now I'm going to tell you what I did in chapter 7. I brought judgment on it. But watch how I do when I do judgment. I continue. When you lose somebody that was stealing from you, beating you upside your head, taking from you, sleeping, you done forgave this man more than one time and he's still going out. I just can't keep what I got to myself. I got to share it with the community. You got those sneaky women walking up to you, treating you like you Foolish, but trying to look, trying to, do you want to say, I thought that's, I spoke to her, she acted like she couldn't speak. That's because she's sleeping with your husband. Doing something with him if they ain't sleeping. I ain't minding you. God said, I'll, I'll stop this whole earth and send enough people online to tell these folk if they don't start reading for themselves, then I'm going to let you know it ain't because I didn't say it. It's just that you didn't pay me any attention. Because you too busy. He's going to tell you something. Just like I told AK, I don't play. I'm not a mean God. I just, I'm a business God. I'm trying to tell you you're going to be the head and not the tail. I ain't just saying that because it sounds good. I really want you to be in the banks. I really want you to be the principals. I really want you to be good mothers and fathers and 
good good person makers, good earring makers, good hair doers. I want you to be all. I want you to be. In, I want everybody to recognize when the people of God do the work, honey. They can do that stuff right. I'm business, but y'all made me religious. That's why y'all. That's why you confused because nobody paid me any attention. But guess what I'm gonna do? I'll, I'll give birth. I'll tell somebody have me a baby till I see my plan. Somebody gonna read me. Bring you home. Now you go back to that church and you still do this. You ain't gonna have no excuse because I stopped the whole earth and said, Hold peace, be still. Be still and let me get these people back on track. If I got to stop you and put a mask on your face because you thought you was cute, I'll just cover your nose and nobody can't see number what you need. That's your eyes because your mouth needs to be closed anyway. When you stand around a mountain, any time to talk, it's time to, it's, it ain't time to get online. It's time, you got a mountain that you got to let come down. You got to be like the children of Israel, walk around that thing, get quiet. That's discipline. That's God. God knows how to orchestrate. He put on the inside of Joshua. This time you're going to win the war by just walking around being quiet. And watch the strategy that they go into this place that they... These little bitty, these, these little blind, weak people, I'm describing them so you know, they were, they beat down the children of God. How does, how, if I carry God, what am I doing running from the enemy? If God is in my backpack, God is in my, on my chest, and God is in my sword, and God is in my pocket, why is the enemy running after me, biting me, and I'm running, and God running too? What what, what that look like? The people of God with the word of God that know the word of God, used to the word of God, and the enemy come out that don't, do, don't even know how to talk. Blind, can't see, and limping, and he beating you down. That's what happened in chapter 7. God calls you, said, because I got, it wasn't but one man in there that did it, but God said it was a part of the body. And when you don't correct your brother, you just as guilty as he is. Why you didn't know that man was stealing like that? Why you didn't know Achan was in there stealing? Why? I bring judgment on the whole nation. You ought to be careful that when you see somebody doing something that you stop it. Because if you don't stop that, you're going to make all of us get in trouble. If you don't stop that going in that room, stealing that paper, and, and the principal done told us more than one time we can't use that paper like that, you don't stop it. You won't cause that machine to get jammed up. And all, ain't none of us going to be able to run no copies off of these kids. It's all kind of ways that we're supposed to stop things. So when Achan did that, I'm not sure why Achan neighbor didn't steal him. Boy, what you got? What you dig? What, what, why you stand in the house that long? What you digging up in there? Well, I just don't, I just mind my own business because, you know, I don't get, I, it, it, well, who got in trouble? The whole nation of Israel and 36 innocent guys got killed. If God was to give a, 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 an assessment to every church that has been teaching before the corona hit the world, how many people could actually pass God's exam? Say, so what, what, what you know about me? Like Jesus said, what, 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 what you know about me? He said, what do people say about me? Then he asked the class that was walking away. He said, now what you know? And then one of the answers came, and Peter said, thou art the Christ. He said, boy, you done heard from God. Then Peter said a few minutes ago, oh, no, Lord. And God, Jesus said, now you got the devil in you. <laughs> he said, now one time I get you credit. You got them right, but you got them wrong. So we ought to be able to be able to walk out the word of God. I am no preacher. I am not a preacher. I'm a person that got interested in them because I have been preached to. I have been lied to. Or not necessarily, if not lying, I did not care enough to see whether it was true, which was a lie ultimately. I said, but this, I need to see what this word is saying. I dare not call myself a preacher. I am a teacher as far as being authorized by the state of southern states. Well, I probably teach all over the world. But I tell you that much, I ain't going to let nobody put my life in the group and say I'm going with the group. Because when I stand before God, he's going to say, get on the scale. I want to see how much you weigh. Your name is written in the book. As long as that spirit is drawing me, every morning I get up, I cry. I cry out before God, not necessarily all the time with tears. And sometimes I'm just so baffled that I'm 61 years old. My dad was a preacher. Well, he was labeled a preacher. My mama treated, my mama didn't know nothing. All I heard her talk about was Jesus. But what she knew about Jesus, she was led by a blind man. So she taught me to be blind. So I started feeding my children blindfold food. And then I woke up and saw, wait a minute, hold up. I looked at my house. I said, this the bed. 
this, 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 what, what I'm, I'm, I'm laying on a rock thinking that's a bed because I'm blind. I, that's all I've been used to. Now, and I'm just giving an illustration. Because everybody I went to church with, they talked just like me. My cult talked just like me. Why you call it a cup, Brenda? Because it didn't, wasn't lining up with the word. When God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, he was not trying to hide his thoughts. He put it in the book. He's going to look at how I think. I don't want you to walk around here talking about the Lord told me. He said, you a lie. I didn't tell you that because whatever I said, I back it up and write it. You can't go to the system in the courthouse and tell the court that the Lord said it. He said, well, show it to me and write well, I had a dream. He said, get that crazy woman out of here and give her one of them jackets that ain't got no sleeves in it. And go sit in there and talk to other people that talk like her and all y'all look like y'all crazy. I'm just telling you what I came out of. My God, I'm so... Well, you just angry. You need to forgive and let God know I don't. I need to be online trying to teach people how to read. Just saying. That's why we don't look nothing like God because we don't know what he said. We, we, I got faith. What is that? What do you mean you got faith? What do that mean? If I was asking what that mean, I just believe. They say, I, there you go. Wrong answer. Faith means I know what he said and I do it. You can't have faith. With he said it is impossible. I know it's impossible because I looked at my own life. My life was jacked up. I married a man based on a few attributes that he showed on the outside physically and what he had on, and he was a member of my cult. And when I married him, he spent more time beating me down, hit me in the face, hit me with brooms, and I'm living like that. Going to church, I got a knot in my lip right now because I didn't, I didn't know any better. Any time, I can't have friends at my house and it's not an indictment, but if this, it's just the truth. It's my life. And I'm going to church trying to sing in the choir with blood all running. Blood, I'm almost to bleed to death. And then I'm sitting out in the middle of the woods saying, Lord, why? Why do I love you and I'm bleeding like this? And he heard my cry. He said, come on, let me teach you who I am. And you think I'm going to live in this earth and let people... Go to places where they hide that kind of stuff. I know so much stuff, it's a shame. I don't even mean to be hollering like this. It's not even in my notes. Because I'm sick of it. You give them the word of God, and we got to make you drunk and beat the drums real loud and get you all happy. And so you won't hear nothing that you're killing babies. That's what they did with it. That's why they killed Jericho. They would go in there and take a baby and put him on a hot fire. And then they beat the drum so loud until they, the father couldn't hear the sound of the baby crying out to drown it out. That's what we've done in the church. We make the noise so much so that people don't know what, what's, what the devil is doing behind, behind the sound. And you think God going to raise me up and deliver me out of that pit? And I know your hypocrisy. And I've seen it and I've seen it. And I said, Lord, what is, I, went in, I saw it in the school system. School after school after school after school. I'm not angry. I just want people to come back and do 25 years. I've been on the street saying, read the word, 25 years. This is this make 25 years that I opened my eyes and read the book of Galatians and shocked the daylights out of me. Then I go to a place and I come to Atlanta. Then the pastor say, you don't need the Ten Commandments. Are you... I sat there and I tried to follow you. I said, what you saying? You use the Ten Commandments every time you call a meeting to tell us what we're doing wrong. Every time you have a meeting about how you want your business to run, how you firing people. Why are you firing these people on what merit? But when we come to church, well, the Lord is just full of grace. What are you doing? I'm screaming, what are you doing? Why do you use the Ten Commandments when it means money comes and flowing this way? You can't go in there stealing stuff. Y'all stop going to the bathroom. You can't go in the, in the choir room uh, having oral sex. You can't. The, you, you, that's the Ten Commandments. But it benefits you when it's drawing in a flow. But when God said expose the people to the mountain, he said in the mountain, I got two mountains. I got, the, I, got the, I got a blessing and I got a cursing. He said these people got to hear that. Because when I bring instruction, when I bring the judgment on them, then they're going to say, oh, 
Who would do this? Would you? Then we can't tell nobody. Then we become liars. And we go home defeated. He said, why, why would you not just tell people what I said? What's wrong with what I said? Because at the end of the day, Jesus is saying, I'm the speaker of revelations. I'm the one that told Ananias and Sapphira, you ain't going to start. I just gave you the Holy Ghost. Why won't you go back and tell these people the goodness of God and show them the love of God broken down so much so until if they hear my word, they'll change. You're too ignorant. God said, the commandment is thou shalt not be ignorant. We're ignorant people. That's why we, that's why you get up in the morning and your neighbors all through the night I get emails and texts and sound on my phone. Somebody just shot this person. Somebody shooting in the air. Somebody going, all of this stuff. Why? I got a big old sign out of my yard. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I'm not trying to shame you. I'm trying to tell you if you don't stop this stuff, God is saying, you got to get my word. I brought judgment in chapter 7. Watch me in chapter 8. Watch me in chapter 8. I don't have time for the foolishness. These churches still got a great big old building. And you got, a, you, you got 99 seats in there with 9 people in there. God said I ain't in that. What I look like a company going out of business. You still trying to tell people come. You out of business. I'm not there. I'm a drawer. I'm a light. People come to me. But no, they don't want to be saved. No, they don't want, this is foolishness what you're doing in there. Why would you pay a light bill? Now you got to suck the life out of people to get the light bill going. Now you got to do this. You got to do all the tricks in the trade just so you, that, that you, you do everything but fall on your face. It's the Lord. Joshua said, why are the people leaving my church? And then half the folk leave, you don't even go. Let me tell you, let me tell you the truth. I left. You ain't never called me in 25 years. What's wrong with that? Oh, you just don't want to be saved. You a lie. What I did was to tell you the truth. And so the only way you can tell people that I that you good is that you had to put a lie on me. I'm the same person. When I do wrong, I don't hide it. You ain't gonna give me a trophy. Oh, she done did it again. Oh no, I ain't get no trophy for that. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't want no medals for doing evil. <laughs> and then we walk around. I'll tell y'all some. I know some stuff that I ain't said yet. And if the Lord ever, 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 ever tell me, I need you to tell the truth. Some more truth. Not that it's nobody's business. But it just happened to be the truth. I don't like talking about how I got beat up in the marriage. Every once in a while to come out of me. Why? Because it's true. Because all I knew was you got to marry somebody in the church of God in Christ. And don't you go out and marry. All them guys in college that I could have talked to that had good sense. But I was scared of you because, you know, you went in the church of God in Christ. So I could marry you. That's not the whole. That just, I'm talking about that's my world. That's not everybody's world. All the worlds that I know is like that. But, you know, I'm just telling the truth by mine. All I can say is I Tried to stay within the guidelines of the team I was on, and I got me and y'all didn't. And then y'all talked about me behind my back. Because you ain't gonna tell nobody you've been at home beating up, and they ain't gonna call nobody and tell it. It just ain't gonna happen. You ain't gonna tell, because you know, girls calling my house, women calling my house. Like, Can I ride to church with you? I need to go to the convocation, trying to get with, with the man that you would. I don't know all the stuff that went behind my back. I'd be lying if I started to. I didn't know some stuff happened. And then we had to sweep it up on the rug. That stuff was hard. So all I'm telling us is that we got to go back to the world. This life. God stopped this whole world and said, Brenda, I ain't started called Corona do this, did this. I started this way back in when I retired. And I started 25 years ago. I just really started focusing on what I was doing since May, since I retired. Because this is what I was... I, I had the word of God and I get on every single day. I got, I got books. I've been tape, television, radio, whatever it costs. And when I saw the Facebook was made for the word of God and people said, you can't be saying all of this. God's Facebook. This is, this is Jericho. God said, in my land. <laughs> they going to get you off of here. How you going to move God? Then God, like God going to say, okay, I got to go. They don't want me. Uh-uh. 
I'm going to take advantage of everything that I can do to tell people to start reading their word. And start acting crazy. Now, I already said about chapter 7. All right. So, so if anybody tell you with no mercy and no grace in uh, the Old Testament, just let them know that's because they lack wisdom. You don't have to call them a lie. So you just lack wisdom. Why? Because I wrote down a few people. Adam saw God's mercy. Cain saw God's mercy because he didn't kill him when he walked away and said, I don't need you. He said, that's the mercy. I'm going to move on because I already know there's going to be a whole lot of people going to try to get some damaged goods and sell it and make money just like you. I told you sin lies at the door of Cain and everything that you do is going to, you're going to be a leader of sin. You're going to be a leader of crap. Damaged goods. So that's as simple as we, it, the word is not foreign to us. We just need to pay attention to the word of God so we can see how to apply it to us. Noah saw God's mercy. He did all of what God said, got off the boat. And then he drank a little bit too much. Well, he drank, got drunk. And then um, he kind of got a little bit, you know, I'm not saying that he did anything, but God had mercy on Noah. And Noah pronounced a judgment against his son. Said, yo, yo, your grass, yo, your son going to do a lot of damage. And you going to be the reason why he did it. Because you should have made sure that you didn't go talk about me, even to your brother. You ain't supposed to go through the church talking about people that's got problems. They got issues. You, I can't holler with you. Well, she don't know. She just don't even know what her own children are doing. I, mm, child, please. Yeah, I am not. I'm like God. I take you don't know everything I know. Don't mean that. You'll figure it out. I'm sorry. I'm not getting on the telephone. I'm talking about nobody. I got another issues of myself. All right, right here. No, if I if I do tell the truth, I'm telling the truth that happened to me. I'm not trying to cast anybody down because that does me no good. But if it happened to me, it's just a part of my walk. And I'm just telling you that stuff wasn't right. Now, whether the people who had harmed me did right, they, that's, they got to stand before God. I ain't mad at nobody. Not a person on the sun am I mad at. Love absolutely everybody. Will help anybody do whatever I can. Right now, I'm trying to help you read these words or you won't be blind. So Noah saw the mercy of God. Lot saw the mercy of God. He said, you got to move out that neighborhood. And that lot good. He said, we got to get you out of here. We've been burning and burn played down. I be thinking about God when, when I said, Lord, do I need to move out this neighborhood? Because these people, don't, these people over here, I'm telling you. They don't pay attention. Some of these folks don't pay attention to nobody. I just bought a house over here a couple of years ago. I love my house. It's an old house. Had it renovated. I did not bought one of them old houses because I be watching TV when they build them houses about an hour and I'm going to buy it. And then I'm going to buy a house like the TV stuff real. Child buying an old house is expensive. <laughs> but I'm learning I like it. But anyway, it is what it is. But if God said, bring the sale of that house, I'm out of here. Because that little section right there, I, I, I'm, we'll see. I right, so Lot saw God's mercy. He saw God move him out of place and destroy that place. And then Abraham saw God's mercy. And the difference between Adam and Cain and Noah. With Noah, I'm trying to think. Noah, 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 Noah. Noah, I, I don't really want to put Noah in this line right here. But let me just say Cain and Abel. I want to use them. The difference between Adam, Cain, and Abel, Abraham. We don't talk about, every time we bring up Adam's name, we talk about what he left us with, with sin. Cain, we know that his product ain't no good. Don't buy nothing from his store. He always sell damage good trying to beat you out of a dollar. We talk about Noah for what he did. He was a, a preacher of righteousness, so he did his part. Lot, we talk about him, but Lot did some stuff that God did not have, but he used it when Jesus was born because Lot left a seed and through his daughter. He slept with his own daughter, not knowing because he was drunk and wasn't paying no attention to who he sleeping with. <laughs> And then he got two of his daughters. He said, use your turn. Go sleep with dad. And he did some stuff. And then God used that. He said, I can erase all that because I'm going to put all that under the blood. And they're going to be related to my son because we don't do filters. We don't. He said, when I talk about my family, I don't leave the people at the family reunion that you don't want to see. I bring everybody to the family reunion. Whole family is part of my plan. He said, y'all, like, your family ain't no better than mine. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. Oh, my family ain't went through all that. Jesus said, child, please. <laughs> but we got to Abraham. The difference of Abraham and of Adam and Cain and Noah and Lot is Abraham. 
It wasn't that Abraham didn't tell a lie. I had a, my pastor, one of the pastors I had told me, said, Abraham wasn't lying because it wasn't no law. It was God. Man, what are you talking about? I'm not trying to criticize the person that said that because look, according to their understanding, that's what they thought. But as a correction for me in my house, is Abraham told a lie because a lie is something that's not true. He said, my wife is my sister. Then he got called out on it. And he said, well, I did tell you that because I thought you were going to kill me for it because she's so, she's so cute. She's so pretty. But indeed, she is my sister because that's my daddy's daughter. That's how we do it in our family. <laughs> anyway, he was trying to deceive the man and save himself alive. And that's called a lie anyway, whatever reason it was. But what God used about Abraham was the fact that Abraham believed God. And from Abraham, believe in God. All of the things that God had to do to correct the children of Israel, Abraham believed God, and guess what it will happen? We've been blessed ever since. One man believed God. God said, when I get one person to act like me, I'm going to bless your family. I'm going to correct them. When they do wrong, I'm going to stick with them because you believe me. You believe me, Brenda. You believe me. And I do. Every morning I wake up, I go to bed with God on my mind. Not to say that I ain't got nothing else to do. Everything else I get myself. That's what I'm going to do during the corona time. I ain't finna hang. I, I'm a, anyway, before the corona, I was in love with this word because it shocked me. You, you just don't know what I was like. You put on some lipstick like this? I was trained to tell you you're going to hell. And I meant it with all my heart. Then I go home. I say, you well, don't feel right saying that. But I said, but I want to be saved. So evidently, God must want me to say it. Until he woke me up. He said, you sincere, Aunt. And I said, yes, Lord. He said, let me take the blinds off your eyes. Follow me. Did it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Then all you know and the people that's related to you look at you like there's something wrong with you. And the people that used to call your name, put a... Got, got so, so many things attached to your name that you don't even recognize. They ain't how to spell my name. They ain't even how to pronounce. I ain't say that. That ain't what I meant. Well, you weren't right right there. Okay, I was sorry. I, I might have missed something. I ain't get all my answers wrong, though. You do, but you got to, you, you, somebody told me, you, you just got to let stuff go. I did. God brought it back up. <laughs> I ain't bringing up God did. All right, now. I ain't never got it to chapter eight. Chapter eight is getting ready to wake you up on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. If we are still alive, we got alive. We are alive long enough to change. I ain't lying to y'all. I ain't said nothing religious. I ain't said one thing that's religious. Everything that I said was about business. You just, you God just said, I'm about business. All right. So now chapter seven, the children of Israel got in trouble. Now, it's getting ready to get better. What I just said is what I said. But what, 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 what I got out of chapter 8, it, it let me know it blew my mind. When you think that God loves you, when you see chapter 8, it's another kind of deeper love. It's a love that just, let's get into chapter 8. All right, let me see what I said. All right, now, all right, let me say this because I wrote down a few things I want to make sure I say. Godly sorrow makes you go do what you did wrong over. When I was telling my little granddaughter, I said, you didn't do something right. I said, what you supposed to say? She understood to say, I'm sorry. That's a wrong answer. I said, the thing that you did, go do it over. Because sorrow means I got to go do it again to fix it. It does not mean that I, I told you I was sorry. No, I got to do some godly sorrow makes you work and justify that I did right because what I did wrong, I did it over. I get no pleasure out of Jesus just coming to him on the altar to him. I'm sorry, Lord. He said, you a lie. Go back and admit to your wife whatever you did and then go back to whoever you did it with 
and you'd make some good out of that. You change that thing so people won't look at my name and say, you walked away saying, I'm sorry. Then the next person think they're going to get away with that. He said, no, you don't. Go get rid of it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. And the hardest thing for us to do is admit when we're wrong. God said, but you, when you do it, I'm going to give you chapter 8. He said, chapter 8, I killed that man. I could have killed a whole, whole group. Because you ought to know the state of your brother before you all start trying to go out and go win a war. Know what's happening so you, I ain't got to get the whole house. I'm going to keep my name. So the first thing we have to understand is that when, when, when Joshua and the children of Israel brought correction to what God said do, then God said, let's go. And watch what God does. We just got through executing capital punishment on the family of Achan. Got rid of that sin. God gives, again, God gives us too many times to say, I, you know, uh, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not saying you can't say I apologize for saying, talking to you that way. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you have taken something that, 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 that belonged to somebody else, you got to go give it back. And sometimes with restitution. I got, a, I, I got stories. All right. And everything that I say, can, you can take me to court. And I can prove it if I need to. We got to stop playing. These are souls. People, this is just not what you see. You're talking about a soul. You're talking about somebody got to spend eternity over something that you're trying to give them and serve them like Cain did. These people ain't buying this stuff because you, you, you say that it's, the, it's good. Then they get home on the finance just like the other stuff. So, okay, they ain't no good either. That's not how God does things. He said, when you put your name on something, make sure you represent me if you represent me. So just be clear with people, that's all. I ain't hard to get along with. I'm God. I saw Achan. I saw exactly what he was going to do. I, I, I let him go through the whole process. And I watched everybody around. I watched Joshua. Joshua falling all his face and all that dirt and elders all throwing all this stuff in their hell. <laughs> he said, I said, get up. Get up and let me tell you what you need to do. Hey, now go straight this mess out so we can, so y'all can keep moving. Because I told you, I gave, I told Abraham, you're going to get this land. Y'all just, y'all just slowing the process up, but you got to clean it up. Yeah, that's it, true. All right, now, God has done judgment on the children of Israel in chapter 7. And chapter 7, like, is described as one of those heavy chapters where people, it's heavy if you don't, if you see that, if you got a lot of wives, why did they, why did they have to kill the children? Okay. Why is God destroying some people? Why is he? I had to I talk park of this park of my five year old this this morning. I said, because he I said every time he knocked on the door, they said, I don't want to hear that. God said, Your house burned out that your, 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 your house smoking. I don't need you to tell me that we, we smell the smoke. We're gonna get it. Every time God said I tried to deliver these folks, they never wanted me. He said, I did everything I could do, like I told Cain. I did everything I could to get you to change, and you wouldn't. I'm not going to use you, Cain. You're going to destroy yourself. And then why is it that God didn't just do the work himself? Why did he raise up an army to go do this? Because God said, if you really, I'm going to tell you something. Why I do this now? I had Joshua to be the commander in chief because if, he said, you, you, do you remember when Korah, came and inspired out the man of Canaan and came back and gave an evil report. And then them folk got mad over what um, uh, Moses had done and said and, 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 and Aaron and got up the next morning running their mouth. He said, did you see my wrath? Then Moses had to tell Aaron, go get the sins, go get the sins, go get the sins, go get the sins, go get the sins. He said, I had to hold back. He said, because if I come in there, he said, if I come in there and you see my face, you won't die. He said, so I got people strategically to go get certain things because you don't want me, my wrath is not like that. 
I will consume everything. I consume the hair off your head. And you trying to do right. Because the righteous going to scarcely make it. He said, so I got people to execute my judgment because you don't want me. That's why I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do what I do, but I got to hold back. I got to hold back. I got to get everybody that's talking about Brenda. And I don't want to do that. Because Brenda had to be corrected too. I get her. So I want you to learn because I'm trying to get you to come to me because I'm steady in who I am. If I ever have to leave down there and come myself, you ain't going to like me. He says, because I'm going to take that oven and it's going to burn. He says, I'm going to cut that oven on and that thing going to burn. And then you're going to be calling your contract and say, I already got a house. I'm over here trying to fix the air condition. He said, then the next thing you know, people will come in. Girl, you know your, 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 your dough not hot. He said, this earth going to burn like an oven. He said, you know how an oven gets started? And you set that temperature. He said, that temperature, y'all ain't seen a temperature like that. He said, you don't want me like that. I love you so much until I want you to stop. And not only do I want you to stop, I'm going to help you stop. And then I'm going to give you crutches to walk on until you get your leg, your strength back. I don't want to destroy you. But I will. So he said, I have this army called Joshua because I, I, I got to, I'm, I'm my foot on the brake. Gotta, I got to get some people out of the way because no matter what I did. I let the sun get on. I let, I let the rain. I did everything I could. But they kept telling me, like when I tell people, I said, can I tell you? I want to hear that. I want to hear that. I want to hear that from you. I want to hear that. I see you online. I turn you off. I think you're stupid. You don't think I'm stupid. Because I ain't doing nothing but telling you what I read. All right, now, so we've gone through chapter seven. God brought correction and watch God's attitude in chapter eight. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear not. Neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise and go up to Ai, the same place that ran you out. See, I have given it to your, into your hand. I'm going to give you the king of Ai. You're talking to him now. Yesterday, he said, I ain't saying nothing. Clean, clean. Okay, let me just go with God. We, th we threw it yesterday. And the story continues. He said, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people and the city and his land. I'm giving you the king, the one that's directing the choir. I'm giving you the land and I'm giving you everybody in there. I dealt with this country and I'm tired. And you shall do to Ai and her king as you did unto Jericho and her king. You know they beat them down. Ain't no more Jericho. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind. So this is what's going on. In Jericho, God said, don't bring nothing out of it. That's how A.K. had lost his life. God said, told you, said, don't order nothing off of Amazon today, Brenda. But you go on to order some off of Ahab. You go on to Amazon, then you order something. God said, I told you not to order nothing today. If you had to kept walking, I would have allowed you to order something now. So what Ahab, what A.K. stole, now he can have. Because in chapter 8, God said, now in chapter 7, I said, don't touch it. In chapter 8, he said, enjoy yourself. So sometimes we just got to follow on with God because God's going to do some stuff. I told you you're going to fall in love with him. And he said, don't you, he said, now, and it, it, when you get to AI, you can, he said, and you shall do in AI and her king as you did unto Jericho and her king only except the spoil thereof, you can have it. You shall take for a prey. You can have that stuff. The stuff they got in there, you can have. It's certain things you can have. You ain't, don't, 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 don't get in a hurry. You can have what's in here. Lay, he's what I want you to do. I said, I want you to lay an ambush. You know what ambush is? I want you to listen to what I'm going to tell you what it is. For the city behind it. So Joshua did what? Heard God. What did he do by hearing God? He obeyed. Joshua got up a rose in all the people of war to go up against Ai. He got an instruction from God. 
And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men. Last time he chose 3,000. This time he said, give me 30,000. Same city. But give me 30,000 men. A valid, strong guys. Guys that get up and exercise and they know what they're doing when they get a weapon. And sent them away by night. Get the wisdom of God working through Joshua. God said, next to him, do it, boy. Do it, boy. I like that. <laughs> and he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie and wait. He said, Go out there and shut your mouth up and be quiet. Just lie there and wait. Just think, this book, this right here, give me be good. That's why I don't understand preachers get up on Sunday morning and start talking about the Lord gave me this sentence right here, and I got to preach my The word preached itself. He sure did. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie and wait against the city, even behind the city. He said, I want you to go behind the city of Ai. Go not very far. He said, now get close to it. From the city, but be ye also, be ye already. Have your ammunition loaded. Get yourself together. And go out there and just be still. Lay out there. Get close to Ai. Them guys got up. And he said, me, myself, I. Verse 5, and all the people that are with me will approach. Look at, look at the strategy of God. i never seen it before in my life. And I and all the people that are with you will approach unto the city. We're going to come up there to the city. Of Ai. You know they beat us down yesterday, right? Well, the other day. Will approach unto the city and it shall come to pass. It's going to absolutely be just like this. When they come out against us at first, they will flee before. That's why he said they're gonna come after us and get what we're gonna do. We're gonna run like we scared. Ah, they caught me. Oh, they gonna be better go. Y'all come on, come on. Ah, Pretend. Look at, look at Joshua. They thought they beat us. <laughs> know the state, know your enemies. That what, that what Paul said. Know the devices of the devil. Know how he worked. Because he ain't coming up with nothing new. Same old devil. He said, watch what we're going to do. We're going to walk up there. We're going to walk up to the city. Now, y'all stay behind there. You stay on your side where I tell you stay. And don't move. We're going to approach it. And then when they come out, we're going to run like we're we scared of. I'm telling y'all the story. <laughs> and I and all the people that are with me will approach the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us at the first that we will flee before them. We're going to turn around and act like we're scared. Pretend, pretend, pretend. We scared. Oh, for they will come out after us. Oh, they come. We know the devil. The devil ain't got no new tricks. If we stay in the word, God will tell you where he is. For they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city. He said they gonna come out after, but we beat them yesterday. Oh, y'all get your stuff. Get your stuff. We gonna go. That is. That don't go to my children of Israel. You got thirty thousand people that they, they don't even know what's behind them. For they will say they flee before us as they did at first. Therefore, we will flee before them. He says, so they think we're going to run because they beat us down yesterday. But we got a word from the Lord. And God ain't even talking about it. He can't hear him. Forget all about it. He said, business, new business. Let's keep it moving. He said, then y'all that's ambushed, then you shall rise from the ambush. We're going to treat them like a big old hamburger bun. I'm going to be on this side. You're going to be on this side. They're going to be in the middle. <laughs> Well, I'm telling the story. Bring in, put tell it in. Okay, show them. I, I got excited. For we will come out after until we have drawn them from the city. For they will say they flee before us as the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Then you shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. God said, so that's what I'm talking about. And it shall be when you have taken the city. You're going to take that little bit of prey that's in the way that wouldn't obey God. That you shall... Set that city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord, shall you do see, I have commanded you. God told me and I told you. That's all God wants. Somebody to say what I said. Say what he said. Joshua therefore sent them forth. And they went to lie at ambush. Why are we watching TV? Now, this is the best movie on, on earth <laughs> in the word of God. I would love to put a play on like this. Oh my God. Joshua therefore sent them forth and sent them to lie in ambush and abode between Bethel and Ai. He said, y'all gone. And I'm going to stay right on my, I'm going to do my part. Y'all come gone on, the gone on, 30,000 guys. That's, that's some order right there. 
on the west side of Abba. Joshua lost that night among the people. I'm going to stay right here because I got, I, got, I got stuff to do. And Joshua rose up early in the morning. Joshua must have got a nap because the Bible said he rose up early in the morning and numbered the people that went up. Him and the elders of Israel before the people of Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him went up and drew nigh. Them folks say, I ain't playing. And came before the city and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. Oh, Ai said, oh, there they are. And he took about 5,000 men and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai. I said 30,000. That's how many called. But he had them 5,000. He'll go 12 verse. And he took about 5,000 men and set them in line ambush between Bethel and Ai in the west side of the city. On the west side. And when they had set the people, even all the hosts, and on the north of the city, got all my people positioned, and their lies in wait on the west of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw, oh, there they go. They're the people of God. That they hastened and rose up early, and then the men in the city went out against Israel. Oh, we got them now. Ooh, we're going to get them again. We killed 36. We're going to get a lot of them today. You ain't giving 36. God didn't let you do that. He said, how many Joshua sent? 30. He said, 3,000. You subtract 36. What'd you get? Math class. And it came to pass when King Ai saw it that they hastened, but God didn't want to lose one of them. So I don't, don't want to make light of that. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it that he hastened and rose up early. And the men in the city went out against Israel to battle. The king led the folk in the wrong direction. What kind of leader you got? What are you leading you to? Your king, without God, ain't no king he defeated. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it that they hastened and rose up early. And the men of the city went out against Israel to the battle. We're going to get them. And, he, and all these people, he don't understand. You're running around with something. You're playing with somebody who, he know the trick. Got you just like you so predictable. We done made God's house predictable. People know who's going to get up and shout. They know what the preacher's going to say. They know what time we're going to eat. We got everything programmed. Predictable. How about predicting the word of God? Let the people come in and find out something that's been written and covered up all these years. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it, that they hastened up, rose up early, and then men of the city went out against Israel to battle. He and all his people at that time appointed before the plain, but he did not know that there were lies. The enemy didn't know. I got some behind your back. Didn't understand that God said, boy, please. Ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all Israel made as if they were, I told you they were faking, they were and Joshua and all Israel were made as if they were beaten before them. Oh, did it get you? Ah! And they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. He said, we're going to act just like they got us. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them. Oh, we're doing a good job. And they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. Right down the alley, Joshua used a good leader. And there was not a man left in Ai and Bethel. All them guys got it. He said, they out there all year. You got, you got your stuff. You got my stuff. I got your stuff. You got my stuff. They went not after, they went, that went not after Israel. And there was not a man left in Ai, in Ai, Ai or Bethel. Some people say Ai or Bethel. Don't worry about the names, how I pronounce these things. Because God knows how the correct pronunciation. That went not, he said, every man in that city went out to go after the, Joshua and his army. And they left the city open and pursued after Israel. Going out, look at darkness trying to go after light. Not this time, Joshua said, We done did right by God. <laughs> we got a word from the Lord. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out your spear. He said, Take your hand that is in your hand. Just like he told Moses, Take that rod. He said, Look what Joshua got. He got a spear. <laughs> For I will give it into your hand. And Joshua did what? Stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city. That, Joshua had to be strong because they had to hold Moses' hand up. <laughs> Joshua had to be strong. And the ambush arose quickly. When they saw the signal, them guys got out of the place. I, I was wondering, I said, did they see it or did, was God just kind of orchestrated it all? Because the spear over here, the, and they are there. Behind the city. Some kind of way when Joshua did what God said. This is like the choir said stand up. They stood up. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place. And they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand. And they entered into the city. And took it and hasted and set that city on fire. Look at God. 
set that is at Joshua way over here. The ambush came in and took the city of Ai. Burn that thing down. And what you think the, the AI going to do? Predict it. They're going to turn around and see what's smoking. <laughs> Let me see. Go to the word. And when the men of Ai look behind. What's that smoke? They saw and behold the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven. And they had no power to flee this way or that way. Silence. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon the pursuers. And the people that fled to the wilderness, Joshua folk, the people of God, pulled you out of your city. And they turned back and looked at you without power. And when Joshua and all the Israel saw the ambush had taken the city and that the smoke of the city ascended, then they turned again and slew the men of Ai. And the other issued out the city against them. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. And they smote them. And anybody, anybody around, anybody still left out of Ai, you're going to die today. So that they let none of them remain or escape. We ain't finna play with you. We, 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 the uh arms, -uh, chapter seven, the uh arms. -uh, mm, 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 mm. I know Saul later on gonna try some stuff, but today we follow God's instruction. And the king of Ai, they took alive. and said, we want him. This story get better at the end, so please don't turn the channel, because it gets even gooder. Yeah, I said gooder. And brought him to Joshua. Brought the king to Joshua. Here, your man. Because if you get the leader, Get the leader. If God can just get the leaders, I say the city. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all those inhabitants of Ahi in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them. And when they were all fallen on the edge by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all Israel would return unto Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. Anything left up in the hill? We got to get rid of it. And so it was that all that failed that day, both men and women, were 12,000, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched, he didn't draw his hand back. God said, stretch out your hand. Joshua said, he's still stretched. Read my word and don't hold back. Don't go in here and get the, the sweet stuff out here. God said, say everything. If I said they died, say I died. Say they died. Not I, they. But Joshua drew not his hand back wherewith he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle, he said, and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves. He said, hey, you can have that stuff. Ai, oh, oh, Achan just can't. He didn't understand. God just has your shop and you're going to go tomorrow. Just wait on me. According to the word of the Lord, which he commanded Joshua, everything that God said, they carried out. It gets good or not. It gets good or hold on. And Joshua burned Ai and made a heap forever, even a desolation until this day. He said, they put it in the record, put it in the history book. You can't find it. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until evening time. He said, you got, you finna hang on a tree. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree Maybe the king was sitting over there talking about, I hope they save me, I hope they save me, I hope they save me. You no, know, Joshua said, yeah, I ain't got to you yet. And cast it into the, and, and they took his carcass down, and what was left of his uh, outfit of the body, his body, whatever, his, his dead body, and cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city, put the king out, cast him out there, and raised there upon a great heap of stones that remained until this day. He said, let them know we did it. Let them know God did it. If you, if we, if the church, us, we, if we don't go back to this word and reread it, like they tried it, like Nehemiah said, like, uh, uh, what the lady name, Josiah tried to say, y'all better go back and check this word. We have not been taught. I don't care what nobody say. I'll get your, I'll take your videos and I'll copy every word you said and line it up against the word and put it online and say, that's a lie. But they don't, ain't no need to be in the drums and making the music and try to make them shout. Because I'm going to tell, tell the system 
to say, please go check these churches out and make sure these folks are teaching these people what's right, just like they do the school system. You can't mix the church with the children. With the, with the God said, how are you going to tell me what I can't do? And I told you the government was on my shoulder. Who do you think I put the children of the hills when they got in trouble? Um, a government. Never could nails until I got that man face acting right. And until he had to stand up and recognize I'm God. I ain't finna separate. Who told y'all to separate me from the government? Government's a part of what you, Jesus said, I'm going to be the Lord and King. We better stop that crazy stuff. Go turn yourself in instead of somebody got to come in and dig in your house and go up under your ground and find all that stuff like they can. Because they coming in there because I'm praying every day. All the stuff that's been stolen. So it's better to be better than Achan. Learn from Achan. They came in and found him and he had to die. It's better if you just be like Rahab and say, I submit. I'll do what you say. Do take me up out of here. That go for me too. Because we done did some low down stuff. And sometimes we did low down stuff because it was passed down to us. It still ain't no excuse. And stop telling Brenda, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm in this word. The Joshua building. Okay, this is a good part right here. He said that, that king is still his body and all the remains. Go down and do the DNA and see if you can find that king. You're going to have to dig a little hard because I don't know if you can still see it like right now. But if you dig up under there, it's still there. Then Joshua built an altar. Uh-oh. Here we go. Here we go. I told you get gooder. God kept his word and get what Joshua did. That's why God said, I don't get no glory out. You come to church and oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Oh, he said, I don't get no glory out of that. What have you done? What have you done that I told you to go do? That now you can come to my altar. You come to my altar and you coming out of sin and ejaculating and on stuff that I told you. Stop looking at stuff and ejaculating on stuff. Playing with yourself, sleeping with your wrong person, sleeping with dogs, sleeping with your chickens. And then you come up here and work to me. I just want to say, I'm sorry, Lord. And all, all on your mind, you can't hardly wait to get, to get back to that chicken coop. I ain't lying to you. My brother said, he, he worked with a group of men, they sleep with chicken. The Bible said in, in Leviticus, he thou shalt not sleep with fowl. And I said, wait a minute, Lord, ain't nobody sleeping with no bird. He said, you want, I, what I say? My brother called me three days later, not knowing that I had just read in the word. And, and I didn't say it out loud to God. I just never heard nobody sleep with a, with a chicken or a rooster or whatever. My brother called me and told me these men sleep with chicken. He had no idea that God was getting ready to, to God. I had no idea. He had no idea. He was telling me that these guys said they sleep with that chicken. Until when they get through that, to see the chicken die, fall on the ground and, go, and die. In 2020. 20. During the corona. And then you could tell me, oh, I wasn't like him. That man sleep with chickens. <laughs> she sleep with dogs. That's why we need to be, that's why we need the word of God. Then Joshua built an altar of the Lord God of Israel on Mount Ebal. You know what Ebal is? It's two mountains that God said, make sure you got. Make sure you got the negative side and the positive side. Evil is the part that God said. Uh, and them, them, that's where the curse is at. What Joshua would be on that on Mount Evil? Why? What do you think Jesus is coming to a world for? To get on the, the to, get, to deliver us from evil? He said, take the altar over there to the evil side, where the curses are. That I told you in, in, in Deuteronomy 28. I gave you 14 blessings and not, maybe 13 or 14 scriptures of Blessing and the rest of them, 60, however many more, curse shall you do this and curse shall you do that. He said, go over there and put that altar over there. Represent me. Be that altar right over there. Where I'm right there in the midst of where you get to understand. When I send my son, he is not coming to a righteous place. Joshua is a replica of what is to come. Then Joshua built an altar of the Lord, God of Israel, in Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man, he's going to put none of your graffiti, none of your, 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 I just want to put my name on here, let people know I was a part of this thing. God said, I don't, I, give me a stone, ain't never been broken. Well, none of your handmade stuff on my stuff. Over which no man had lifted up any iron, and they tell me this came from a this a Mercedes, this a Bentley, this a oh I can't even pronounce all them cars. That can't haul none of us drive now. <laughs> Don't know this stuff mean nothing right now. I mean we still drive, but ain't about to, to try to. I don't know what we doing because we in the world. You still act like it ain't no Corona. 
Still sleeping with for that crazy. I don't want nobody touching on me. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, over which no man had lifted up any iron, and they offered their burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. He said, that's why I want my offering at. Take it to the side where I cursed that place. The side that the, 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 children, the, the church don't hear no more. We don't go to the old because God, Jesus delivered us from that. You better, you better Jesus said, you better, you, he said, I'm going to tell you what you do. He said, you love, he, I tell you what you do. Just go ahead on and love everybody. Because I understand that's all you can handle, but just treat people the way you want to be treated. Because at the end of the day, it still means everything that you say you don't want to eat. You don't want, you don't want me serving no food that ain't, you, you don't want me serving you anything, so don't you do it. You don't want me uh, ignoring you when God said change. And this is so, the, the Old Testament just written about me. It's all about me. Now, the wise man to go see what I said, because I told you to go learn from it. But y'all be lying on me. Y'all lying on me. I mean, for some people, that's all they can handle. But maybe they can't read. But I don't even know how to fix that. All I'm saying is he said, if you do this right here, happy are you if you do it, if you just... You got to really do a lot of thinking. But if you go back in this Old Testament, he give you the details of what he was saying. And we don't know enough. Because some of that stuff we take back to the wild, my God. So you know you shouldn't have took that back. You know, stand up in that line and long, go back and take something back that, that, that you got to go spend eternity for. <laughs> I ain't trying to be funny. That's just part of who I am. And he wrote there upon the stones and covered the law. Uh-oh. You know, every king that ever had to have a king had to get his own pen and pencil out and go write down everything that Moses said. He said, God, you're going to have your own copy. Write your own book. But God said, graciously to us, I'm going to give it to you online. I'm going to give it to you in leather. I'm going to give you this. He said, I'm going to do it for you. Because y'all are wicked old generation. Y'all ain't got time to do what they had to do. You're so wicked trying to do sin. I'm just going to make sure you can get it available. Hopefully, you'll pick it up. And he wrote there upon the stone a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. Who did that? Joshua. Who did that? I got to go back and see who did that. I think Joshua did it. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord, the God of Israel, the Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as is it written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, of whole stones, over which no man had lifted up in iron, and they offered their burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. So Joshua said, Let me, give me mine, I got to write this down. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on the side of the ark of the on that side before the priests of the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well as the strange everybody was there. As he was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim, where they said, Bless you, you're gonna get this, you bless this on the good side, and half of them on the Mount Ebal. As Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded before. That they should bless the people of Israel. How? And afterward he read what? All the word of the law. He read all the word of the law. They just went through the battle. They came back and went to the part that the evil part and built an altar. And Joshua said, let's read the word. And they read all of the book of the law. The words of the law. The blessings. What part did they read? Just the blessings? No. The blessings, verse 34, and the curses. That's what we lack. You can't build a building until you're going to have this. You got to tell these folks what they're going to do if they get fired. And he read all of it. You let God stop being ashamed of the gospel. Oh, you the day ain't ready for that day. See, people got to grow to that. God said, you're a lie. He said, I had the strangers there. I had the babies there. I had the men there, the women there. Strangers, me. Some of them just came in there. Let people hear what God. Stop being afraid of what God said. Like God can't handle his word. Anyway, that you do what you want to do. I'm, I'm moving on. The blessings and the curses. That's what he said. According to the, what is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not. I read every single sentence, comma, Everything and everything is changing my life. I'm better than when I walk in my house. I like my own house. God said that when I tell you to do something, you gonna. It's all about. I'm trying to get you to see what you like 
if you just let me work through you, you're going to like it. And then it's, I, but Brenda, what am I going to do with it? I want you to enjoy your, what you have. But let me tell you, let me orchestrate your life. And then you go back and look at what you did and see what you like. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel. Let me say this before I get this last part of the sentence. In the book of Malachi, after they get through talking about the people that were robbing the tithes, the word says, don't you forget the, mo the laws of Moses on Mount Sinai. That's just before the church that's still teaching. You don't need that no more. I don't. Hey, you may not, but I'm talking to the people that want to hear from God. Let's just say what the word said. He said, don't you forget that. And then after that, he said, and then, and then, and then Jesus um, in Matthew, right after Malachi, four, four, four verses on down, then Jesus genealogy of Jesus was brought into our attention in Matthew. Right before that, he said, don't you forget that? Because they're going to teach you. And then, then who was that in, in, in one of them down in to close to Revelation where he said, y'all took the laws of Moses, I mean the, the writings of Paul and butchered that man's letters like crazy. You butchered that what that man said and got these churches all messed up. And I ain't no preacher. I'm just a citizen. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel. With the women, who else was there? And the little ones and the strangers, the people that didn't vote. Well, you know, everybody ain't ready. She just, you know, she just, you know, you got to let the Lord. Y'all better cut them lines out. I have heard them lies. And they came from relatives. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, which with the women, who was there? Women? They heard the word. And the little ones and the strangers that were living among them who had gotten used to these ways. God was just still adding to his body. I'm adding. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to eat, eat chapter nine. Talk to y'all later. Bye.